It's been a little while since I last took a look at a fintech, but today we're taking a look at the new kid on the block, an app called Orca. So welcome back to another episode sponsored in collaboration with Fintech Finance, the leading news platform for financial technology. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. You all know that I love technology. Anything about it. Smart home tech, electric transport tech, wearable tech, speaker tech, any kind of tech that you can think of, I love it. Except tech in smart plugs, of course. But I also love financial technology. And some of you who've stuck around long enough will know that from time to time, I occasionally do an episode on fintech content that I think is cool. And today is no different. Today, I want to share with you something special because this is the first time that I've been given access to a service before it's been released. So I want to take a look today at something called Orca and share my thoughts and opinions on Orca as a service. So what is Orca? Well, their tagline is making investment accessible for everyone. Now, there's a very, very good reason why this is something that interests me and that I want to share with you. Because investing is one of my goals or has been one of my goals for 2020. Now, every single year, I set myself five goals. And some of you keen eye viewers would notice those whenever I do reviews of products that involve my phone. Because on the background of my phone, on the home screen, I always put those five goals every single year and tick them off as I go through them. Now this year I wanted to catch a fish, go to another country, get 60,000 subscribers. What was the other one? Learn a language and last of all learn to invest. Well, February came along and coronavirus put a spanner in the works for pretty much all of those. I was definitely not going to another country this year. Catching a fish was going to be difficult considering that I was locked in my house for most of the year. Learn a language, well, everybody's mental health took a toll. I just did not have the brain capacity to learn another language. 60,000 subscribers, again, a bit of a long shot here because I was producing less, because I was a bit miserable being stuck inside like everyone was. But the last one, learn to invest, now that was something I could possibly do in 2020, being stuck at home all day. Although... 2020 hasn't been exactly the best year for investing either. I mean, it's been extremely volatile, the markets, and we've seen companies go right the way up and right the way down to go right the way back up again. It's all been a bit crazy, especially when everything dropped, when everything hit red alert level when coronavirus locked down all the countries. But looking at companies like Tesla, whose share price has gone from around $80 to today's value of around $400, that's a ridiculous amount of growth in such a short space of time. And I wanted to learn how to capitalize on that and how to invest in Tesla, how to do it, what does it do, how can I make sure that I'm not risking all of my savings in investings and how can I start saving for my retirement in the Bahamas that will never happen because I've already missed the hype train of Tesla back at the start of the year but it doesn't matter because Orca is that tool to help you learn how to invest and the best thing is it starts doing it straight away at the home page. You're greeted straight away with your home page and the amount of money in your account. Now I know it says 10,000 pounds. Believe me, I wish that was true. That is not real money. That's fake money that Orca have given me to play with so I can test the app out and start to learn to invest and basically see what the whole service is about. And as soon as Orca releases fully, that's going to turn to zero. But I'm hoping they forget. Hmm. I want to skip over the portfolio for just a second and look immediately below this section. It shows a bunch of investments that you might be interested in, which is cool because it potentially puts you onto a company that you might not have otherwise looked at. But below this is the new stream, which is also equally valuable to putting you onto investment opportunities that you might not have been aware of. A lot of knowledge and information can be built from this feed, and it's a really great place to start looking at 
whether or not a company or whether or not particular environments are worth investing in. And it's nice to see Orca build this into the user interface because a lot of apps out there don't build news about the stock market or about particular companies into their user interface or app experience. So this is something that definitely starts to set them apart from competitors. But after all, the news is just the news. And at the moment, the tumultuous market that we're in, the news probably makes you even more anxious to invest than it should do. So maybe the news isn't the best place after all, but it's still an extremely useful tool once you start getting started and allowing you to access a bit more information about the companies you're investing in. When we dive into the actual share view, this is where the information I feel is the most relevant to people learning how to invest and whether or not something is a good investment. Let's look at the Ocado stock, for example. As soon as we tap on that company's profile, we can see a lot of information from the price to the daily change in that price, but also any advice that Orca can give you to help make a decision, such as the great big blue section here, that says big gain detected, and it shows you how much £1,000 would be worth now had you invested it a year ago. I mean, this isn't a guarantee that the company is going to continue performing extremely well, but it's a good source of information and a good tip that's better than just staring at matrix numbers for 12,000 hours, trying to make sense of all the bizarre graphs that the stock market can throw at you. Something like that is just a quick, handy little tip to tell you information about how that company has performed over the past year, and I love it. Scrolling down, you can see how the company is performing with its revenue growth, which is the amount of money the company made, which is measured against the previous year alongside analyst ratings, which are extremely useful, as this is essentially the recommendation from analytical agencies on if you should buy keep or sell the shares in the company you're looking at. You can see under Ocado that 25% of all analysts think that you should buy Ocado shares, 34% say that you should hold, and 41% say that you should, should sell. And this is an awesome tool that can help people with no knowledge in the stock market to make good investments. Obviously, there is no guarantee that these recommendations will be right. In fact, 100% of all analysts could be wrong. We don't know. Well, actually, that's impossible because you could either buy, sell or hold. So some of them are probably going to be right. This just gives you such a good overview of making good investment choices for people like myself who just didn't know anything about investing beforehand. The last thing you can do under this view is take a look at news of that particular company, which will filter for the most part any relevant news that Orca believes is important towards this stock. Now, I've fed it back to Orca that in this news section under the individual stocks, I would love to see a bit more of a kind of focused news feed for that company because at the moment, it does feel a little bit generalized. It does include a lot of information from the stock market around the particular sector that you're looking to invest in. So I've fed it back to them that I want it more focused, and I believe this is something that they're looking at doing very soon. So that's exciting that they've been quite receptive on that. Now, what if you didn't want to tap on the You May Be Interested stocks to discover prospective stock ideas for investments? Well, if you scroll to the end of the list or press the magnifying glass, this is where the real exploration starts. And what I love straight away is that Orca displays the best and the worst performing stocks in the past week. So those that have gained the most in value and those that have lost the most in value. This gives you a real quick glance at opportunities that you might otherwise have missed, much like the You May Be Interested section. This list is limited to three stocks on the homepage of the Explore section, but tapping on it will actually give you the top 10 or the worst 10. Once you've selected which stocks you want to purchase, you've done the reading, you've had a look at analysts' ratings, so you need to add funds into your Orca account to purchase those stocks. And it's really straightforward to do so because Orca have implemented open banking, which is basically an interconnectivity between all of your accounts and allows you to draw the funds straight from any of your connected bank accounts and place it in your Orca account within 15 minutes. So it's a really quick forward thinking way of implementing moving your money around it's fantastic to see that they've put that in straight at the start 
Once it's in your Orca account, you can select buy and select however many shares that you want to purchase. And here you can also add a trailing stop, which is especially useful for new investors who want to minimize loss and decrease risk. Tapping the question mark will tell you a little bit more about it. But essentially, a trailing stop is a trigger that will sell your shares automatically if it hits it. But the cool thing is, is this trails behind your price. So you can set a percentage drop, say 10% drop. And if your stock price increases and your funds increase, 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 your stop, your trigger to sell that goes with it. 10% less goes with it. And then if it sh drops sharply, it will sell at 10% the price it was at at the highest point. So if let's say your stock has increased to 200 and you set it at a 10% stop loss. So if that stock suddenly drops from 200 pounds down to 150 pounds, it would actually sell at 180. Your little stop loss will trigger at 180, which is 10% off 200. Now this is awesome because a lot of competitors don't offer a trailing stop. Instead, they offer basically a flat stop. By a flat stop, I mean, let's say you bought a stock for £100 and it increases to £200, but on the way, you decided to set a stop loss at £150. With Orca, that will follow the growth and give you a maximum amount of profit. But with a flat rate, it will stay there permanently. So if that stock increased to £200 and then immediately dropped down to 150 it would sell at 150 It wouldn't sell at 180 a percentage of the maximum value. It would just sell when it drops all the way to that bottom point that you set maybe three months earlier. Now, that's no good because you're not maximizing the profit. You're still getting a little bit of growth there on your investments, but you're not getting as much as Orca offers you with that trailing stop. I hope I've explained it. It's a little bit confusing trailing stops, but I think that should explain it. Once you've chosen the amount you want to buy into the company, Orca will display any of fees associated with this order and breaks it down into a simple shopping list. Orca charges £1 fee for every £1,000 of a single order. So if you buy £100 of stocks, then it will be £1 fee. If you spent £1,100 on stocks, it would be £2 fee. Simple, straightforward, and in my eyes, not extortionate. And there's no hidden fees as well. What you see is what you get. And as well as this, Orca has said that they're going to bring out an ISA, which will cost you nothing. It'd be free to all clients. So that's pretty good when you compare that to a lot of competitors that offer ISAs but charge quite a lot for them. With Orca being free, that means that it is an extremely good option to start looking at. But I am aware that there are other companies out there in the UK that offer trading with no fees at all. Yes, okay, like I've said, they do charge for things like ISAs, but... They don't charge for the actual individual trading. But I don't think that's that important, and I'll get on to why very shortly. But first, I want to talk about some of the things that I think Orca could improve upon at launch and what I would love to see next from them. Now, I love the fact that in the app, it seems you can tap question mark on quite a lot of different things and terminologies that you just don't know what it means. For example, looking at the trailing stops earlier, when you tap on that question mark, it brings up some more information. Now, I'd love to see more of this in the app. I'd love to see the ability to tap on any terminology in the app or a question mark everywhere just to get some information on what that particular thing is. For example, ETF. What's an ETF? Well, if you're new to investing, you might not know what an ETF is. And I don't believe that in the app it gives you that definition quite easily. So that's something I would like to see is a bit more of a friendly kind of questioning interface where you can tap buttons and it tells you a bit more about what it is. Maybe even like a little tutorial section or something. But as for the most part, they've done a good job, especially with those little question mark bubbles every so often that just helps you understand what it is you're looking at. I would also love to see the inclusion of US stocks. At the moment, it's only the UK stock market that's available. 
Now, I have been in touch with them and I've asked them, is this going to come? Are you going to put US stocks in there? And they've said, yes, they're going to include stocks from the NYSE and NASDAQ as well. And they're going to work straight away at launch in bringing those to Orca. So that's really exciting to see. And I cannot wait for them to bring US stocks to the app, especially when I'm running to catch that Tesla hype train. Hmm. I think there's only one other thing that I would like from the Orca app, and that's the addition of fractional share trading. Essentially, that is when you buy a share that's less than one share. You can buy a portion of a share. Now, this, for the most part, isn't that relevant because a lot of shares are under $100, for example. But when it comes to things like Amazon shares, which obviously aren't in the app at the moment, but when they are, these are trading at over $3,000 per share, which are out of reach for the most people. 3000 is a lot of money for one share, and people just don't want to pay that much. Without fractional shares, I believe that it does shut off a few types of people who maybe want to invest lower amounts in companies like Amazon. So I would love to see fractional shares be included in the future. So what are my overall thoughts on Orca? And why do I think that £1 fee is inconsequential when you know there are other competitors out there that don't charge a fee for doing trades? Well... Over the past year, I've tried numerous apps, and I will share some of these with you eventually. But Orca is the one that has really grabbed my attention the most. And that's because a lot of the information and really helpful tools that Orca provide are free and included with the service. This isn't something you're going to see in competitors, even things like the future ISA they plan to implement for free. This sort of thing is a paid service when it comes to other competitors. So actually... If you think, let's say you spend £10 a month on a service with another company, but your trades are free, maybe you're like me and don't particularly invest that much or buy that many shares in a month. I mean, I may put in once a month, decide what shares I want and buy them. If I do that with Orca, I'm spending £1 a month and I get all of these cool premium services like analysts ratings news and isa in the future all this sort of stuff for free trading stops as well all this is free and i pay one pound for my trade whereas another company i might do that one trade but still pay 10 pounds a month for the pleasure of using those particular services so actually this is why i think that one pound fee is a bit inconsequential economically is actually saving me money in the long run. Now, at the moment, it might not suit people who like to buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell. I can appreciate that. But for someone like myself, and possibly you guys who are watching out there, who maybe want a bit more of a relaxed nature or relationship with the stock market, then Orca is definitely one of the top contenders that I've experienced out of all of the ones that I've tested so far. And the thing is, this is just the start for Orca. All of the suggestions that I've sent to them and said, look, I've loved this, I've loved that. I don't like this. Could that be improved? Could this do this? They've been like, yeah, 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 we're looking at that. We're doing this. I'm really, really excited to see what they implement in future. And actually, the fact they're including a free ISA in future, that was something I found out literally yesterday. So I'm really excited to see what they can do in the next year or two. Now, as of early December 2020, Orca is going to be launching really, really soon to the public. Although, depending on when you're watching this, you might be watching this after it's already launched so double check but in celebration of their launch they're giving away fifteen thousand pounds worth of free shares and all you have to do is click the link in the description below and sign up to orca to be in a chance of winning some of those free shares when they launch and if you do sign up like i said it's completely free and you get to have a go of Orca, I would love to know what your thoughts are once it's launched. Really, let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you found it useful, whether or not you found it helpful learning to invest and getting started on your journey if you don't already. But that's all from me, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And I'll see you back for a regular episode of Stu's Reviews around tech or gadgets very, very soon.